Lift up the word and repeat after me. I believe this is the word of God. I believe what God says because it is impossible for God to lie. Well, Elon Musk uh, has done a lot of technological things on the earth right now. Automobiles, outer space, and, and there's been a huge amount of technology that's taken place with him. And, and Mr. Jobs, who uh, invented your iPhone and, and your iPad, uh, he, he was a great technological man. As far as technology goes, I, I don't know very much about either one of these men's personal lives, but I can tell you this, that uh, Elon Musk said in an interview one time, uh, well, he was asked this question. He said, what is the greatest threat to mankind? And some people would say, well, it's, it's got to be a certain group of politicians, <laughs> Uh, another group of people might say it's global warming, climate change, although right now they're concerned about global warming, but when I was in high school, we were being told that the ice age was coming. So whether it's ice or heat, uh, there's a lot of people thinking about the climate. Maybe, maybe that's the greatest threat to mankind. But Elon Musk, make, he, he, made, he made this statement. He said, the greatest threat to mankind is artificial intelligence. And we, uh, we need to understand that technology's changed. Now, when I was a young boy, if you can picture this, me and my friends, we were the kings of the neighborhood, and we all had our bicycles, and we would ride around the neighborhood in the center of the streets. You could do it back then. But our bicycles were quiet, and we wanted them to sound like they had a motor. So we would go and get our mama's clothespins, and we would get some playing cards, and we would clip them to the fenders so that every time that the spokes of the wheel would turn around, it would go, ch -ch -ch, and it would sound like you had a motor. That was the extent of my technology when I was a kid. And things have changed. You know, telephone lines, I remember when... When my family, we moved down here while I was in high school and opened up a marina here at the Lake of the Ozarks. And the marina, the telephone was a party line. In other words, you picked up the phone. There could be Aunt Gladys down the street talking on the phone. You're wanting to make a business call, but we, it, it was just like an extension in your house. But things have changed. You know, the book of Daniel says, and let's take a look at this scripture, Daniel 12, 2. It says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the end of time. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge will increase. How many of you would say that uh, knowledge has increased in our generation? Yeah. We've gone from cards stuck on the side of a bicycle to make the sound of a motor to people going into space. We actually have space uh, vehicles right now that are outside of our galaxy sending messages back to earth. You know, for 6,000 years, ever since Adam was taken out of the garden, for 6,000 years, people traveled at the speed of the fastest animal they could find. If you're in one part of the world, maybe it was a horse. Another part of the world, it may have been a camel. You know, it, it, who, who knows what kind of animal that you would ride. I even saw somebody riding an ostrich once when I was in Australia. I thought, oh my gosh. But in one generation, you know, my grandma uh, on my mother's side, my mother's mother, she told me that she was 13 years old before she ever saw her first automobile. Now, granted, she was born in Climax Springs, and there's probably a lot of things that they didn't see in Climax Springs. But in her lifetime, she went from seeing her first automobile at the age of 13 to before she passed, she watched people land on the moon. One generation, we went from animal travel to space travel. Hmm. Communications changed a lot. 
You know, back in the day, uh, telegraph, telegram, archaic phone systems, and a very slow, excuse me, postal service was the best way that we could communicate. But what do we have now? We, got, we have fiber optic lines. We've got satellites that are hundreds of miles in space. And, and people in Australia, I have friends in Australia and New Zealand who are watching this service. They're watching this live right now. At the words I speak, they're hearing them and watching them instantly in Australia and New Zealand, halfway around the world. Has communication changed? Oh, yeah. Communication has changed a lot. And remember the words of the gentleman who's a businessman and owns a lot of technology companies. He said, in his opinion, the greatest threat to mankind was artificial intelligence. Well, the advancements in technology have actually lessened the workload. I made a note that the advancement in mathematics and mechanics, along with a rapid advancement in microchip technology, has been a blessing to the average person, whether you realize it or not. It's been a blessing. Because with airplanes and the appliances and medical research and office equipment, etc., with this advanced technology, we've been able to live longer do more, travel farther than any generation in the past. And we've been able to do this by the advancement of thinking machines. Machines that can think for you. You know, the uh, Hebrew language, 3,500 years ago, had a word in it that they use today in Israel, that means computer. Now, 3,500 years ago, they didn't know what it was. They just simply knew that that word meant something that thinks for you. And so probably the Hebrews of 3,005 years ago thought, oh, huh, that's my mother-in-law, you know. <laughs> now, but now they know it wasn't. Human intelligence Human intelligence, your intelligence, your ability to think is a gift from God. And you need to understand that. That with this gift of intelligence, you're, you're constantly seeing things around you. You're evaluating through the auditory, auditory and, and visual sensations that come into you. You're able to make decisions based upon information that you receive wisdom that you've learned, your knowledge, you can evaluate all these things. And then you can add them with the gift from the Spirit of God of wisdom and mercy and these types of things. And you can make decisions that no mechanical device could ever make. See, you were created in the likeness and image of God, but your computer wasn't. Hmm. You can have a deeper understanding of things than any computer could because you have revelation to the ultimate knowledge of the universe given to you by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the revealer of all truth. Now somebody may say, well, you know, I, I saw uh, a monkey uh, walking around as a pet at somebody's house you know, and it was wearing a diaper, a Depends or something, and it was doing tasks. You know, it was drinking out of a cup. And Okay, we've all seen animals do those types of things. But there's a, a difference between mimicking human behavior, and some animals can mimic human behavior, and even some computer systems can mimic intelligence, but there's only one true source of intelligence. Jesus said that he was the truth. Yeah. Now you, you must understand that according to 1 Thessalonians 5.23, where it says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. You are a three-part being. 
You are spirit, soul, and body. You're created in the likeness and image of God. A computer, a computer system, artificial intelligence is created by man, and it's not a three-part being. It is just simply a programmed device. Now, here's the interesting thing. The Bible tells us that we receive things through our spirit, through our soul, which is your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions, and, and through your body, spirit, soul, and body. You, you receive information from those three areas, and then it, it gets processed and put into your heart. And then out of the abundance of your heart, you react, your, your mouth speaks. Well, you need to understand this. A computer system, artificial intelligence, has no heart. And it cannot evaluate the truth. Now, there are those who say, um, well, maybe artificial intelligence will become sentient. In other words, it'll become self-aware. It'll understand that it exists. Well, first of all, let's, let's define intelligence. Now, there's a lot of complicated definitions of intelligence. And um, so, don't be thinking of any specific person when I read this definition. Okay. Artificial intelligence, in easy-to-understand terms, is the ability of a digital computer or a computer-controlled robotic object to perform tasks that are commonly associated with human reasoning and response. Now, until this generation, something like that was science fiction. But with the advancement of quantum physics and so many other things, uh, microengineering and, and miniature data storage, we're beginning to see the science fiction of the past becoming a reality of today. Now, the first computer was designed in the 1940s, and uh, it could do, they had different types of uh, computing programs, there's COBOL and various things, and then uh, they got into the binary, you know, where everything was a plus or a one or a zero, and different types of program. Then even on our computers, remember, there was BASIC. Remember BASIC? In fact, my brother-in-law and I, we designed a program in BASIC programming, and it was uh, something that would do an amortization scale. It would give you uh, how much your payments would be on a house or a car or something like that. And it was something that uh, you could get your loan all sorted out, get it arranged, and maybe some of you have heard of the program, but we called it the Loan Arranger. <laughs> oh, well. But it never went anywhere, uh, needless to say. Uh, computer programming bypassed us while we were still programming. But um, one of the earliest examples of how computers were used to show that they were smart was in uh, developing them to play chess. And they learned, there's several different ways of learning, and I don't want to get into all the different ways, but one of them is, the most basic is learning by rote. And learning by rote simply means this, you try this and if it works you do it again, if you try this and it doesn't work, you don't try it again, you do something else. And uh, they found out that <laughs> they were some of the early airplanes, they tried to put some programming in them using that process. And it, it's kind of like, a, there's Johnny over there. Uh, you can say, Johnny is at school or he's at home. And so the computer says, well, he's not at school, so he must be at home. Well, the reality is, is Johnny didn't go to school that day and he didn't go home. He went fishing. So that caused the computer program to crash and the plane. <laughs> so, uh, but see, things have progressed beyond that. And uh, 
Some high-level engineers are concerned that computing, computing devices might become, once again, sentient or self-aware. In other words, they, they begin to realize that they exist. Hmm. Well, this brings us to a question. Is artificial intelligence... How do you like a sermon like this? <laughs> Is artificial intelligence moral or immoral? Um, well, here's the, here's the thing. It, it's neither one. It's neither one. It's just like money. Money's not good or bad. You've heard me talk about this many times. You put a million dollars in the heart of an evil man, he does evil things. You put a million dollars in the hands of a righteous man, he does righteous things. It's not the money, it's the heart of the person controlling it. It's the same way with artificial intelligence. It's the person who controls the technology. And here's where we're going to get into some scriptural stuff. It's who controls the technology. I mean, the, the, same, the same internet that's transporting this message right now to, at last count, somewhere around 63 countries in the world, this message right now being transmitted all around the world, it's taking the gospel message to people in a lot of places. I got a, a, an email from somebody in Ukraine yesterday. They said, this is their church. Because they, they can't seem to get church where they are. I don't know if their church got bombed or what. But, but, but the internet, it's doing a good thing taking the gospel message to Ukraine. But the same internet is also carrying pornography and it's carrying the ability of some people to, to do human trafficking. Well, the internet's bad. No, the internet's not bad. The people controlling that portion are bad. The people controlling the other portion are good. It's not good or bad. So here's the thing. Whose hands does the technology fall into? Once again, I remember one of my favorite television programs when I was a little kid was called Test Pattern. <laughs> you know, it was, it was the Indian chief at night that was, you know, like on, like on a coin, you know. He, at 10 o'clock, TV went off. And if you wanted to watch TV, you watched Test Pattern. I remember in Kansas City when we got our second station. We started out with Channel 4, we got Channel 5, and then we got Channel 9. Boy, we were uptown. We had three channels. You could choose. You actually had a choice. Wow. But a lot of preachers came out back in that time and said, television is of the devil. I remember seeing one preacher. Boy, he, he was a, a huff and spit and blow preacher. You know, oh, TV's of the devil. You know, and he just, and, and a lot of people said, well, you know, TV must be of the devil. And listen, CBS, NBC, ABC, all of these networks could have been bought for 10 cents on the dollar. And Christians could have bought them, and we could have owned all of television. We would have had it all. But so afraid of the technology. Let fear come in to where instead of using it, they avoided it. How many of you out here have your Bible right now on your cell phone instead of paper? Raise your hand. That's technology. The Word of God is in that little device that you just held up. Hmm. Well, in 2017, Saudi Arabia became the first nation to make a robot, Sophia, to make a robot an actual citizen. It gave her voting rights, gave her a passport, and you've seen her interviewed many times on television. She talks like a human, 
looks like a human, but it, this is not one of those talks like a duck, walks like a duck things. This is talks like a human, looks like a human, reacts like a human, but it's not human. It's nothing more Sophia. I don't even like giving her a name, but Sophia is nothing more than just a computer. And instead of a keyboard, it has, it has senses. Well, she's been given the right to vote. So what if these mechanical devices, which actually uh, <laughs> some of these robots are now in use, you may not realize this, but they're now in use in some old folks' homes. And people with dementia, that can, Sophia will sit there and listen to that story 25 times and every time just be as excited as she heard it the first time. That was humor. But it's true. It's true. It, for those of you watching, it didn't go over very well with the crowd that was here. So, if, <laughs> But here's the thing. Sophie is never going to die. So what if we develop and, and we say, oh, this would never happen. Come on. That's never going to happen. Well, when I was in college, I never thought that there would be a law in the United States that men with big beards and were lumberjacks could marry a big man with a beard and be. I, I just, I mean, that was science fiction. That was weird. And now on TV, you see them in commercials holding hands and kissing each other. Just, boy, I, they may be lumberjacks. It just makes me want to slap them. And, and some of you may say, well, you're prejudiced. No, I'm not prejudiced. I just like what the Bible says. We should stay in our own lane. Okay. But think about this. You may not think this could ever happen, but Sophie is never going to die. And what if we start allowing for some of these robotic devices? They have names. They get citizenship. They get voting rights. And they never die. So then what happens? So we, we start having voting that is controlled by the programmer. Because remember, all mechanical devices are subject to the programming. Okay. See, technology simply, simply submits to the person controlling it. My car, I mean, my car is like self-driving. You, you've seen my car. You, you fixed my car one time. But, but I'll tell you what, I mean, you can take your hands off the wheel. It'll stay in the lane. It slows down, speeds up. It passes. It parks. It, it does, you know. Now, this is just in the last few years this has come about. But what's another three or four years going to bring? I mean, if when, when I took my driving test and failed it, when I, <laughs> when I was 16, I, I took my driving test. And things have changed. And the highway patrolman who was giving me the test was sitting in the front seat, and he had a big cigar. And he was smoking that cigar and filling up the front of the car with smoke. And I was just 16 years old. I turned 16 that day, get my driver's license, you know. And so he had this little golden cigarette lighter, and he was lighting his cigar again. And I hit a chug hole, and his cigarette lighter went out the window. <laughs> and, he, and he said, he said, <laughs> this is up in Harrisonville, Missouri. He said, son, and you know, they got that hat, you know. And the glasses, and they just got that highway patrol look, you know. Son, back up. And I did. I, I found reverse and backed up over his lighter. <laughs> and, and he failed me. Now, Here's, here's something I want you to know, and I'm going to show this scripture here in just a moment, but let's put up 2 Timothy 1.7. And I think this is very important as we progress through this. We need to understand that God has not given us what? 
a spirit of fear. You should not fear technology. Now, God gives all wisdom. And as we said earlier, technology can be used for good or bad. Technology in itself can be used, like we are doing right now, to take the gospel message around the world. We should use it for the glory of God. But the enemy, we need to understand, will try to use it to defeat the purpose of God. And uh, hmm. will AI, artificial intelligence, ever become alive, human? The answer is no. No. Because in order to be human, you must have a spirit. And technology, I don't care what kind of technology it, it is, it does not have a spirit. But we were created in the likeness of, and image of God, spirit, soul, and body. You know, God gives us uh, this, this whole technology thing. You know, synchronous satellites, the way we're transmitting the message around the world today. Uh, Clyde McGee, a gentleman that I knew, a friend from years ago, and, and he's, he's in heaven right now, but he was an aerospace engineer. And uh, a major ministry on earth right now, a ministry that we're connected with, wanted to have a worldwide communion service. A worldwide communion service. So that the people on the other side of the world could watch television and have communion at the same time that we were having communion here. And that was impossible. So Clyde McGee, and you can, this is all, you can find out this on, on the internet, it's all knowledge. Clyde McGee was called by the head of this ministry and said, is there any way we can do this? And he came up with the idea of synchronous satellites so that satellites, we had satellites at the time, but, but they weren't synchronous. And he came up with a, a, a way to make the satellites move with the rotation of the earth so that we could have intercontinental satellite services. See, now there's a case where communion was, and they did it, and communion was able to be done around the world by this ministry at the same time because of technology. So don't fear technology. Look, once again, I, we've said this, and I know some evangelists kind of use it as a catchphrase, but it's true. If you go to the back of the book, you find out in the end, we're victorious. The Lord is victorious. Satan is defeated. He's gone. He's out of here. The fallen angels, they're gone. They're out of here. Demons, we don't have to mess with any of that anymore in eternity. And the enemy is trying to prevent the, his destruction. He's, he's trying to prevent the carrying out of his sentence. Wow. Okay. I heard a man say the other day that, oh, these microcomputer chips, they are just so amazing. You know, you can get a... a a microscope, and you know, uh, uh, what, what do they call them? Um, not nuclear, but um, at any rate, there's a word for it. But you can get a certain type of microscope. You only, you only knew that because you're the fingerprint expert for the highway patrol, <laughs> right? Okay. okay, but yeah, you get one of those things, and, and you, can, you can look at things that are, let's just put it in language that I can understand, really, really small. You can look at things that really, and they, it's amazing how small things can get. It's amazing that there can be a computer system that will fit on the head of a, of a pen. Amazing. Well, but what about God? What about God? Well, did you know that your DNA, these two little strands, a strand of DNA in your body is somewhere between five and six foot long. And there's two little polymer things that go down. We could get into all the details of it. But if you took the DNA in your body, which, which is everything, 
about you. I mean, it's the follicles on your hair, all the intricate things within your body, everything, your brain, everything is in this. If you took that DNA and you unraveled it, the sun is 93 million miles away. Your DNA unraveled would go to the, you can verify this, this is a medical fact, can go to the sun and back many times. Just the DNA within your body. And every little section of that DNA carries a genetic code that our scientists, to this, our medical scientists to this day are just beginning to figure out how intricate it is. And they actually believe through fractal technology and all this type of thing that within each little section of that DNA is everything that stretches to the sun and back multiple times. What I'm saying is technology will never equal God. No matter how much man tries, you, you can... You can get some kind of a structure, a titanium structure. You can put all the hundreds or thousands of little motors in it. You can, you can get the facial expressions. You can stretch some kind of uh, skin-looking covering over it. You can make it have eyes that move and, and all the facial expressions. But it's nothing more than just a pretty computer. It's nothing more than lipstick on a pig. Okay. Now, 2 Corinthians, I'm, I'm running out of time, and I really don't have time to tell you everything I want to tell you today. But I do want you to know this. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen 14 says that Satan himself transforms himself. So Satan is a deceiver. He, he will use this technology. He will. He, he is, and he will use this technology. Now, there are already church services that have sermons written by artificial intelligence. Now, listen to this. At the World Economic Forum in Switzerland, there was a philosopher and prominent professor at Hebrew University in Jerusalem, and he believes, here's what he believes, AI, artificial intelligence, could write a new Bible that would be globally accepted and it would become the standard religious book. And he could unite these religions. Now listen to this. According to the professor, and this is the news release, according to the professor, this new religious Bible could be used to unify and correct religious thinking. Could this be the Bible that the Antichrist is going to use after the church is taken away to fool the population that is left? Remember, remember, after the rapture, the earth is just going to be full of liberals. I mean, uh, I, I, excuse me, I'm sorry. After the rapture, the, let's just put it this way. After the rapture, the church will be gone. Okay. Monday of this week was the first successful operation where a computing device was placed within the nervous system of a person mentally. The person volunteered for this. They had to sign a, a bazillion papers basically saying, if I die, I'm not going to sue anybody, you know, that type of stuff. They volunteered for it, and the person's recovering. And they feel that this operation is a success. And it was done by a company of, owned by a person you all know very well in the news. And this is the first step in what they believe is going to be inserting a chip that will give a person, a human, Wi-Fi access to everything on the internet by thinking it. You want to know something? 
just ask. Voice recognition? We have voice recognition now. You know, my daughter's name's Sherry, okay? And I get so tired of this. I say, I'm, I'm, we're, we're in the car, and I say, hey, Sherry. And then my phone says, yes, Larry, what would you like? Because my phone thinks I said, hey, Siri. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, now, but here's, here's what some colleges are developing right now. A department where you don't go to school and pay tens of thousands of dollars for college education like I did for my kids. You, you don't go to school to get a Ph.D., you go to the hospital and get an operation and they implant a Ph.D. in that field. So information then, education, is not learned, it's implanted. And then the people who are educated are the people who have control of the AI that educates and the people that have the money. And the people who don't have the money. So, for example, let's say your, your kid graduates from high school and they want to get a Ph.D. Now, by this time, the universities are shut down. And a Ph.D. costs, oh, $395,000 cash up front. You'd probably say, hey, go get a job at McDonald's. Uh, <laughs> although McDonald's has started opening up their stores now, you can find this check it out in the news media, they actually have stores now with no employees. Now, I don't exactly know how that works, how you go through the drive through but, um, and in some cases at the drive through it would be more pleasant to see Sophia than some of the people I've seen. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, I went through a drive through in another state. It wasn't around here. I went through a drive through in another state a couple months ago, and they went to hand me my food, and I just felt like saying, keep it. <laughs> Why? Because you touched the bag, man. I don't know. Okay. So, implanted intelligence, and i got to get to... See, look, the tribulation, when the church is caught away in the rapture, when the catching away of the church takes place, then the Antichrist will start setting up his kingdom. And... Jesus said this in Matthew 24, 21, For there will be great tribulation, such as has not been seen since the beginning of the world until this time. The tribulation is going to be a really a bad time. And the Antichrist is going to really do his best to set up his kingdom. Do you think he'll use artificial intelligence? All right. Well, here's the thing. The Bible tells us well, let's just take a look at that scripture. Uh, let's see, it's over in Revelation. How many of you like the book of Revelation? Yeah. Revelation 13, 16. Let's take a look at that. This is something that the Antichrist is going to do. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or their foreheads. Now, when I was a kid, the preachers were saying, you know, it's a tattoo. A mark's got to be a tattoo. Well, here, just in one generation, we know that it doesn't have to be a tattoo. It can be an implanted chip. It can, and it can, may be something we haven't even thought of yet. Verse 17, And that no one may buy or sell except who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Hmm. Verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Now, what we need to understand, and without getting into a teaching on the book of Revelation, of which I would really like to do right now, but you need to understand that it's not necessarily the Antichrist. Okay, there's the unholy trinity. That's the false prophet, the beast, and the man of sin, which is the Antichrist. 
Uh, this is the unholy trinity that's trying to imitate the true trinity. And this comes about in the book of Revelation. But who is it that is in trouble if you don't have the mark of the beast? Who is it? Who's in trouble? Well, of course, it's the person who doesn't have the mark of the beast. Now, it says here in this verse that you can't buy or sell unless you have that mark. In other words, you go to the grocery store. If you don't have the mark, they won't sell you groceries. You want to buy electricity for your house so you can have heat and you don't have the mark, the electric company won't sell you. It's illegal for them to sell you unless you have the mark. But it also says that there will be a worship that takes place. And the worship is of an image of the beast that will be given the power to look like it's living. It'll be giving, given the power to speak. It'll be given the power to do various things. And it's not the beast that is worshipped. It's the image of the beast. The, the image that has what? Artificial intelligence. Now, you may say, uh, wow, that scares me. Well, it shouldn't scare you. Now, we're going to see precursors to all this happen. But understand this. Before the tribulation, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ, the graves will be opened and the dead in Christ will rise. Then we who are alive will be caught up together with him in the air. And then we go to the paradise of God. We go to heaven with him. He doesn't touch down on earth. He, he comes for us, the catching away. And we go to heaven with him. And for the next seven years, we have the judgment seat of Christ, which is a, a reward ceremony. We have the marriage supper of the Lamb, and we get trained on how to come back with Him and rule and reign for a thousand years. When the seven years is over, we come back with Him, and the Antichrist, the beast, the image of the beast, they're toast, and they're done. So all of this technological superiority that the Antichrist will develop is going to be short-lived. And you're not going to be here. But see, so then, why, why does the church need to know this? It's because this salvation is just for me, my four, and no more. This salvation, to avoid that time, you need to be a part of the body of Christ. You need to be born again. You need to be saved. And so we say, well... They'll find out that Jesus was Lord when the rapture takes place. Well, that's true, but they're going to be left behind with all of this mess. And if you love your relatives, if you love your neighbors, if, if you love your friends, then you'll share the gospel with them and give them the opportunity to get born again so that they can be caught away also and not have to go through all this junk that's going to be on the earth. You know, Jesus said it this way. He said, it's going to be a time of tribulation like never has been, like the world's never seen. Well, we've seen a lot of stuff, haven't we? It's going to make the Holocaust look like kindergarten. It's going to be a horrible time. Hmm. Well, Jesus is coming back for a glorious church. I am so excited about his return. Look, God provided a boat for Noah and his family. He provided the land of Goshen for all the Hebrews so that when the plagues came upon Egypt, they didn't happen in the land of Goshen. Huh. And he's got the rapture for the church. You know, we are the bride of Christ. And someone said, why... How do you know that Jesus isn't going to leave his bride on the earth during the tribulation? Well, see, the wrath, that, the severe wrath that comes about during the tribulation is 
Jesus pouring out his wrath on an unrepentant generation. And we are his bride. And simply put, Jesus is not a wife beater. He's going to catch his bride away to safety before all of this takes place. Wow. So, wow. Notice all of these pages I'm turning here. This is really good stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Revelation chapter 13, verse 14. And he deceives those who dwell on the earth by those signs which he granted to do in the sight of the beast. Telling those who dwell on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. Verse 15. He was granted power to give breath to the image. This is an image. This is not a living thing. This is an image. He was given breath. He given the power to give breath to the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. See, in generations past, nobody could seem to understand how that could happen. But in this generation, in just the last few decades, you know, it's uh, kind of like when you watch a commercial, when you listen to a commercial on the radio, voice over technology. Did you know that most of the voices you're listening to, most of the voices you're listening to on the radio are not human? They're programmed voices. True, today, many radio stations are using complete voiceover technology. And you get to choose the language. You get to choose the dialect. You can, you can dial it up, and, and I tinkered with one of these programs for a while. They're kind of fun in a way, but you, you can choose with English. You can have British English, Australian English. You know, they, they talk different in Australia. Good on you, Mike. You know, they, they talk different. It's still English, kind of. But uh, <laughs> Pastor Dale Smith from Australia is watching this morning, so. I love you, Pastor Dale. <laughs> okay. Uh, da, 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 da. I'm going to read to you my closing thought. Are you ready? Never forget this. Satan cannot create life. He is a fallen angel removed from heaven and he himself was created by God. The only way he would be able to give the image the appearance of life would be through a combination of sorcery and artificial intelligence technology. There should be no fear of this coming devastation on the earth because when the Lord appears, he takes us away and keeps us from the wrath, the great tribulation that is to come upon the earth. Remember this. I can remember my last statement without notes. Jesus didn't die for technology. He died for you and me. He loves us and he allows us to use technology. Uh, a question, I, I have a, I don't necessarily want to do a commercial, but I am going to say this. I have a new book coming out and it'll be out here in a few months. You can Oh, there's a, th well, thank you, Angie. That's a, a copy of the, of the cover. This is from um, Destiny Image, Harrison House. They're, they're putting it out, Hidden Mysteries in the Bible. We talk 
more extensively about a lot of these things. Well, what's it say on the cover? Okay, uh, secrets revealed. Alien, <laughs> are you ready for this? Aliens, UFOs, giants, time travel, the multiverse, artificial intelligence, and other unexplained phenomena, and what the Bible has to say about it. Uh, it's coming out in a few months, and you can go on uh, the Internet. You can actually pre-order it, and uh, they'll just ship it to you when it, when it actually finishes rolling off the press. But the Bible and God... Um, I believe God's very much in favor of technology. I, I personally believe, and I think I can prove it through Scripture, that in heaven there's technology. And that the technology, God has all knowledge, all wisdom, but he's allowing his creation to discover this is, this is part of what we like in life. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun solving a mystery, isn't it? it it's, it's fun working out some kind of... It's fun working a Rubik's Cube for some people. It's fun. When you solve it, I mean, the accomplishments of discovery. This is why archaeology and astronomy are so exciting to the human living on the earth. And you say, well, how do we know that we should be excited about those things? Because God created you, and that excitement's coming from your spirit. And, uh, you know, it's, it's no different than when angels show up in the Bible in chariots. Well, why do they need a chariot? If they can fly, why do they need a chariot? Why did they have the wheel within the wheel when that came down with Ezekiel and all, and all this. Well, we can talk about stuff like that. Technology is not something to be feared. In fact, the only fear you should have, and that should be an awesome fear, is of God. And you need to understand this. He has given you authority over all, not some, but over all the power of the enemy. And according to what he said... And nothing shall by any means harm you. Now, you've got to believe that. And so just when you see the storm approaching, rejoice. And in the words of John the Apostle in the book of Revelation, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Do you realize that if he showed up today, if the next voice you heard was the voice of the Lord, the trumpet of God, before you even got it out of this building, how glorious that would be? You know, you may be saying, yeah, but I was supposed to go on a vacation next week. Hello, this vacation is going to surpass any vacation you will ever have anywhere. When that trumpet toots and we shoot, we're out of here. And from then on, it's happy acres for us. I'll tell you, it's, it's going to be good. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you all the glory. We give you the praise. And we thank you, Father, that... Your mercy never ends. And your revelation never ends. We thank you, Father, that you're sending your Son to take us out of here before of all the calamity that takes place on the earth. And then bringing us back to rule and reign with you. We love you, Father. Bless these, your people, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Wow.